Hundreds came together tonight at Lincoln County High School to say goodbye to one of their own. The candidates for Lieutenant Governor square off in a debate. Hear what they had to say about the biggest issues facing Kentucky. A special mass and a special blessing for a group from Lexington making a pilgrimage to see the Pope. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 11. Good evening to you. Hundreds gathered to remember a teen who died from injuries he suffered in a car crash. The prayer vigil tonight for Ricardo Nunez was held outside Lincoln County High School where he was a senior. WKYT's Monique Blair shows us the tribute in our top story at 11. In Lincoln County Wednesday night, the hearts and minds of hundreds of people were on one person. As they came together to honor, remember, and say goodbye to 18 year old Ricardo Nunez. He touched many, many people, and this world is a better place because he was in it. Nunez was in a car accident on Labor Day while on his way back from a Florida trip with four of his friends. After two weeks of fighting for his life in a Tennessee hospital, Nunez died Tuesday afternoon. His smile was just contagious. If you knew Ricardo, you knew his smile. Ricardo was no stranger to the football field here at Lincoln County High School. He played football up until his junior year. He also worked at Zaxby's in Danville. He also had four brothers and three sisters. And to Ricardo's family, especially to his parents, I would like to just say you raised a phenomenal young man. Nunez's family say they hope Ricardo is remembered for his honorable character, a sentiment echoed by many Wednesday night. And what I'd like to do is just challenge you guys to love people the way Ricardo loved people. In Lincoln County, his smile just kept us all going. Monique Blair, WKYT. Ricardo Nunez's funeral is Monday at the Lincoln County High School at 1 o'clock. Blue lights lighting up a Kentucky community tonight in honor of a murdered state police trooper. Trooper Joseph Ponder was shot and killed during a traffic stop last week. Hardin County Sheriff's Deputy Jeffrey Bringers helped organize the tribute in Rineville. He went to high school with Trooper Ponder and wanted to show his support. You hear about it on the news all the time. You see it happen in other states, other communities, and you feel bad. But when it happens in your community and it happens to somebody that you personally know, it's a tragedy. The deputy says he plans to keep his blue light up beyond tonight to honor all law enforcement. An Army National Guard captain seriously injured in a hit and run testified in the suspect's trial today. Police say former Lexington firefighter Jared McCargo backed his SUV into Noel Espino outside the beer trap last September. Espino lost his left leg in that crash. Espino told jurors he was in so much pain at times he hated his life and wished he was dead. The Herald Leader reports Espino was the sixth of 15 prosecution witnesses to take the stand. That trial is expected to wrap up tomorrow. An argument between two men ends with one in the hospital and the other in jail. Middlesbrough police say Aaron Redman hit Ronnie Marcy with his car at some point during an argument on Cumberland Avenue this morning. Marcy had to be flown to UT Hospital in Knoxville. Friends tell WRIL Radio he suffered head trauma and can't feel his legs. Redmond is charged with assault. A brand new intersection in Lexington will soon be getting a traffic light. Last night here at 11, we told you how there have been five crashes at Citation Boulevard and Greendale Road since it opened on Monday. The state says it will now work to get a traffic light up and running as soon as possible. In the meantime, state workers put out barrels this morning to keep drivers from crossing Citation. You have one more day to enjoy this beautiful weather. That's it. We have some changes on the way for the end of our week. WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is here now to show us what is ahead for us. Hi, Chris. Hi, Amber. Hi, Sam. Indeed, that one more day is your Thursday, and then we start to get in on a rather rainy period taking shape later Friday into Saturday. Confidence, uh, confidence continues to increase on the rains right now on Defender. Nothing going on, though clouds are starting to show up 
from the southeast. We are not going to watch the western sky. Do not worry about what's going on to the west of Kentucky. Worry about what's going on to our east and southeast, where we have a couple of areas of low pressure here that are going to continue to throw moisture back toward the northwest, and that will eventually include central and eastern Kentucky. So whatever is across the Carolina is going to, again, try to work its way against the grain toward the uh, west and northwest. That does not include tomorrow. Tomorrow is another picture-perfect day, upper 70s and low 80s across the entire region, though we'll see a little more clouds the deeper we get into the day. When I come back in just a few minutes, I've got some brand new rainfall numbers hot off the presses, guys. We'll share those with you, and the totals are a little higher than what we had at 6 o'clock. That's in less than 10 minutes. All right, Chris, thank you. The deposition former Democratic State Representative John Arnold gave in a sexual harassment suit against him was released today. In the deposition, Arnold claimed Democratic nominee for Lieutenant Governor Sandy Overly told him she would knock him out after he spanked her knee. Arnold also couldn't recall ever sexually harassing the legislative staffers who sued him. The Herald Leader reports the complaint was settled this summer. New at 11, two of the women vying to be Kentucky's next lieutenant governor went head to head in their first televised debate. Education, health care, guns, and Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis's stand on same sex marriage licenses were all on the table tonight. WKYT political editor Bill Bryant moderated tonight's debate at Midway University. Good evening. Both major party candidates for lieutenant governor of the Commonwealth are women, and so it was only fitting that they debated the issues facing our state on the campus of Kentucky's only women's college. Military veteran Janine Hampton was in the Republican corner. For the Democrats, State Representative Sani Overly. For an hour, Vicki Dorch from WLKY in Louisville and I talked with them about the biggest issues facing Kentucky. Overly had some tough words for Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis, who is refusing to issue marriage licenses because of the Supreme Court's same sex marriage ruling. I know that on both sides of this issue, across our Commonwealth, that passions are running very high. They have and they continue to be. But we are a nation of laws, and no one is above the law, and no one can ignore the order of a federal judge. But Hampton stood by Davis. This is an issue of religious freedom. And these questions need to be asked, first of all, is whether the Supreme Court, uh, one of three co-equal branches of government, is the final arbiter on anything, because if that was true, I would still be a slave. The real fireworks of the evening erupted when discussing sexual harassment, an issue in many workplaces, and even at the state capitol. Well, first of all, when uh, Jack Conway was asked a similar question, uh, last week, he made a joke and said something about his female dog, uh, which I found a little, just a little um, trifling. What I found reprehensible about that discussion last week was Matt Bevin's false attacks on me. And that's why even Kentucky Republicans call Matt Bevin a pathological liar. Now, next up, we'll be tackling the Kentucky governor's race, and they will be debating on the campus of Eastern Kentucky University on October 25th. In Midway, Bill Bryant, WKYT. Bill, thank you. Well, many of you have asked why independent candidate Drew Curtis's running mate was not at tonight's debate. League of Women Voter Policy requires candidates to have 10% support in nonpartisan opinion polls. In the last WKYT Herald Leader Bluegrass poll, Curtis had 8%. Eastern Kentucky University will not host a presidential or vice presidential debate ahead of the 2016 elections. EKU had hoped to host the debate in its Center for the Arts. EKU's president said the school is grateful for the opportunity to apply and will try again. Pope Francis spent his first full day in the U.S. today. He made history by elevating an 18th century Spanish missionary to sainthood during Mass in Washington, D.C. It is the first canonization to take place on U.S. soil. The Pope also met with President Obama, prayed with bishops, and met many Catholics who came to see him. He has another jam-packed day tomorrow, which includes a speech in front of Congress. As a busy day for Pope Francis comes to an end, many Kentuckians leave in the morning to go to Philadelphia to see him there. Tonight, a Catholic church in Lexington held a special mass and offered a special blessing for those making that trip. WKYT's Garrett Weimer has their story, new at 11. Hundreds of thousands already have welcomed Pope Francis on American soil. 
uh, Holy Father, as he's arriving in our country, he's bringing the love of God, the love of Christ, and he's giving us a, a message of true love. One life can mean so much for so many uh, in, in serving and giving and sharing. And At St. Peter Claver, Father Norman Fisher offered a special blessing at Mass. We ask you to bless him the Pope is Philadelphia. Praying for pilgrims leaving Lexington to see the Pope in Philadelphia. And we are thrilled. Father Fisher and others going to see the Pope say they hope the Holy Father's visit leaves an impact that lasts long after he returns to the Vatican. We're such a divided nation right now. My hope is that when he speaks to Congress, some of them will think about what they're doing and what their role is. They're not there to fight against each other. They're supposed to be taking care of the people. I feel that uh, there, there's going to be a ripple effect uh, for our country to, to draw together again. I think there's so much division that's happening in our country that we forget our ties to one another as a human family. Praying for the Pope to unite the country as he unites millions of Catholics with his visit. In Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Father Fisher tells us that he is among 44 people riding on a bus to Philadelphia tomorrow. Several other groups from Lexington are also leaving in the morning. A high school football coach has acknowledged that he told two players to tackle a referee during a game. Video of the incident at John Jay High School in San Antonio, Texas, went viral earlier this month. According to internal documents, an assistant coach told the players to do it because the referee used racial slurs and missed calls. The boys were in court this morning where they also testified a coach gave them the order. But really the boys' focus here was, was on accepting responsibility for their actions. Um, they understand that they had a choice. They made a choice. It was the wrong choice and they're just looking for fairness. The referee has denied the allegations. The assistant coach is on administrative leave while the district investigates. A Greenham County teenager has pled not guilty in another teenager's death. James Ratliff is charged with manslaughter and evidence tampering the death of 19-year-old Maddie Conley. Police say Conley jumped off Ratliff's ATV when Ratliff's 17-year-old girlfriend started chasing them in a car. Prosecutors asked to have Ratliff's bond increased, but a judge denied the request. A young Louisville girl is going viral online because of her kind act towards state police. Five-year-old Isabella Gregory saw a group of officers eating at McDonald's after attending the funeral for Trooper Joseph Ponder. She wanted to cheer them up, so she used her allowance money to buy them ice cream. One of the troopers mm. took a picture of the gesture and put it on Facebook where it has been shared a thousand times. Her gesture it's just means the world to us. Uh, her allowance money, who knows how long it took her to gather that much money. Favorite eating first shoot. And I they, got them ice cream. Why did you get them ice cream? Because I, because I said I well, the troopers have since returned the favor by traveling back to Louisville to treat Isabella to a meal at her favorite restaurant. How about that? Her own allowance money. Uh, love stories like yeah. that. Best story of the day. <laughs>